A level chemistry paper 1 multiple choice. Before starting the solution, dear listeners, first of all, subscribe my channel and click the bell icon so that you can get my latest video related to A-level chemistry solutions. Let's start the paper. Question number one. Manganese and nitrogen can show a range of different oxidation state. Calculate the sum of the oxidation state of manganese and nitrogen. Okay. And in which way is this sum the smallest? Uh, in option A, there is a manganese chloride MnCl4 and nitrogen. We know that the oxidation state of those elements which exist in free state have zero. So nitrogen has zero oxidation state. And uh, what is the oxidation state of manganese? We will help from the neighboring atom chlorine. Chlorine has minus one. And there are four chlorines, so charge would be minus four. So manganese would be plus 4. So the sum of the oxidation state of manganese and nitrogen is 4 plus and 0, it is the 4. Option B. We have two compounds again, manganese carbonate and next one is NO2 minus 1. Minus 1 is our all charge on both the atoms. In manganese carbonate, carbonate has 2 minus charge, so manganese would be 2 plus. And in NO2 minus 1, each oxygen has 2 minus, and there are 2 oxygens, so charge would be 4 minus. How will you get the answer minus 1? If you put 3 plus charge on nitrogen, then you will get the minus 1 answer. So nitrogen has 3 plus. So what would be sum? Manganese has 2 plus, nitrogen has 3 plus, the overall sum is plus 5 and in option C we have again two compounds first one is K2 MnO4 and second compound is NH4 plus 1 plus 1 is our all charge on both the atom uh, oxygen has 2 minus and there are 4 oxygen so 4 to the 8 minus charge on oxygen Potassium has plus 1 charge and there are 2 potassium, so it would be 2 plus. Uh, and manganese would be 6 plus, so that we can cancel the minus 8 charge. And on nitrogen, in NH4 plus, hydrogen has plus 1 charge and there are 4 hydrogens, so charge would be 4 plus. You want answer plus 1, so what will you put? The charge on nitrogen definitely 3 minus if you put 3 minus charge on nitrogen you will get plus 1 answer so what is the sum of the oxidation state of manganese and nitrogen 6 plus and 3 minus so your answer would be plus 3 and last one is Mn OH whole thrice and next one is NH2OH in this case, o OH has minus 1 charge and there are 3 OH, so charge would be 3 minus and manganese would be 3 plus. And in NH2OH, OH has, OH has minus 1 charge overall. So hydrogen has plus 1 and there are 2 hydrogens, so it would be 2 plus. To cancel out this minus 1, what would be the charge on nitrogen? If you put charge minus 1 on nitrogen, now apply your maths. This is the, these are the charges. Nitrogen has minus 1 charge, hydrogen has 2 plus charge and OH has minus 1 charge. So overall the charge is neutralized. So you can say uh, in this case manganese has 3 plus and nitrogen has minus 1. The sum of the charge is 2. So question is. In which row is the sum smallest? D is the answer. Question number two. The mass spectrum of an alloy of copper and gold is shown. On the y-axis percentage abundance and in the x-axis mass to charge ratio. 63 is the atomic mass of copper. 65 is the isotope of copper. And 197 is the atomic mass of gold. 
and which expression can be used to calculate the relative atomic mass of copper okay in this question we have to do a little bit calculation uh, actually there are 56.36 atoms of copper which has 63 mass and there are 25.14 percentage of copper which has 65 mass so first of all I will start from here the total mass or total atoms total atoms of copper just add these two values 56.36 and 25.14 so your answer would be 81.5 these are the total atoms of copper and total mass total mass of 81 atoms there are 56.36 atoms which has mass 63 and there are 25.14 atoms which has mass of 65 just use your calculator and you will get the answer 5184.78 this is the mass of 81 atoms of copper so what would be the mass of one atom of copper 81 atoms of copper has this mass what would be mass of one atom of the copper so it would be x from here you will get the answer 51 84.78 divided by 81 this is actually 81.5 not exactly 81 81.5 and you will get the answer 63.6 now look at the options your answer is 63.6 remember that if you solve this expression you will get 63.6 from option C so this is your answer and without solving you, you can also uh, tell the answer without solving this you uh, you should not add the value of the gold because you are finding the atomic mass of copper so if you multiply 56.36 into 63 25.14 into 65 and divided by total atoms 56.36 plus 25.14 so it would be your answer question number three which atom has ex exactly three unpaired electron definitely phosphorus phosphorus has 15 electron so its electronic configuration would be 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 and 3p3 3px1 3py1 3pz1 so this is the outermost shell of phosphorus and it has three unpaired electron so isolated gaseous phosphorus atom question number four element w uh, is in period 3 of the periodic table and has a solid white oxide X okay X is thermally stable and has a very high melting point from this from a very high melting point from this point or from this keyword we can deduce that this is the ionic compound most probably this is the ionic compound so and it belongs to third period so my options would be it may be Na2O, it may be MgO and it may be Al2O3. Why not SiO2 because SiO2 is not a white solid. Therefore I am not uh, involving the SiO2 in these oxides. Okay and X is slightly soluble in water. Aluminum oxide is completely insoluble and Na2O is completely soluble in water so what is the option left behind magnesium oxide so it would be magnesium oxide so magnesium oxide is ionic compound and joint three-dimensional lattice remember that 
all of the ionic compound all the ionic compound exist uh, uh, all the ionic compound has a joint structure joint structure mean in which you are unable to count the number of particles and lattice mean there is a regular arrangement positive ion negative ion positive ion negative ion this is the lattice and in the lattice second thing is very important your particles uh, should be arranged in three dimensional on x axis y axis as well as z axis question number 5 ethane a non polar molecule and fluoroethane a permanent a dipole or a polar molecule have the same number of electron in their molecule. Their boiling points are given. Okay, there is a Van der Waal forces in the ethane and in the second molecule CH3OF permanent dipole forces are present. What is responsible for the difference in the boiling point? Definitely in CH3F, this is the polar molecule like this. This is the CH3F. Fluorine has slightly negative carbon is slightly positive and the second molecule of so there would be a permanent dipole dipole force so the answer would be ch3 has a permanent dipole and ch3 ch3 does not so the answer is option b next question is the reaction pathway diagram for the chemical reaction is shown. Which statement is correct? The activation energy. Okay, remember that. Whenever you, you will see this diagram, remember that activation energy is always positive. Whether you, uh, you are talking about the forward reaction, if you are talking about the forward reaction, your activation energy would be this. So, the, uh, the, uh, this activation energy should be positive because energy is increasing and similarly if you are talking about the backward reaction your backward reaction will start from here so your activation energy still would be positive so this is very important that activation energy is always positive whether the reaction is exothermic or endothermic which statement is correct the correct answer is c why the enthalpy change for the forward reaction and the activation energy for the backward reaction have the same sign Okay, this is the forward reaction and where is the enthalpy chain? Enthalpy chain is basically the energy difference between the reactant and product. So this is the enthalpy change. And this is delta H positive because energy is increasing endothermic. And if you are talking about the activation energy for the backward reaction, so this would be backward reaction and activation energy will start from here. So activation energy is also positive. Therefore, option C is correct and all other options are wrong. What change in condition or molecular property make it more likely that gases approach ideal behavior? Gases are ideal at high temperature and low pressure and those gases are more ideal in which intermolecular forces are very very weak. So weak intermolecular forces, those gases which have weaker intermolecular forces are ideal. Why A option is wrong? If you increase the pressure, intermolecular forces will develop between the molecules. And if you lower the temperature, their kinetic energy will decrease and molecule will come closer and intermolecular forces will be stronger. As well as if molecule is polar, like ammonia, so polar molecule have a stronger intermolecular forces. Question number 8. In this question, there are two equations. Uh, oxidation reaction and the reduction reaction. Both are the half equation, first of all. You have to combine these two equation and then you will see which equation is correct but before combining the equation the rule is the number of electrons lost should be equal to the number of electron gain in the first equation two electrons are lost and in the second equation six electrons are gained which is impossible so i will do multiply by the first equation by three if i multiply the first equation by three then your equation would be like this 3 moles of C2H5OH it gives 3 moles of C2H4O 6 moles of H plus and 6 electron and your second equation 
would be same because number of electrons are equal you will multiply with second equation by one so it it would remain same cr2 o7 2 minus plus 14 h plus plus six electrons it gives two moles of chromium 3 plus plus 7 h2o and your net equation would be like this first of all write down the reactants of both the equation so i will start from here 3 moles of c2 h5 oh plus cr2 o7 2 minus 14 h plus 6 electron it gives now i am going to write the products of both the equation 6 h plus 6 electron 2 moles of chromium 3 plus 7 h2 now look at the equation Those things which are present on the both side, you can cancel. Electrons and 14H and 6H. If you apply the math, if you put the 6H before the arrow, then it would be minus and you will do the calculation plus 14H minus 6H. So it will remain 8H. So your net equation would be C2H5OH plus cr2 o7 2 minus plus 8 h plus it gives 2 cr3 plus plus 7 h2 so your equation is option a question number nine what is the correct expression for the kc for the reaction shown this is very simple whenever you have to write the expression kc kc has a formula kc is equal to right hand side divided by left hand side so what is present on the right hand side iodide and iron 3 and there are two two moles so this two will go in the exponent form so i think your answer is b because iodide and iron 3 are present above and there are two moles of iodine so this is the power two moles of iron 3 and this is the 2 and iodine i2 there is one mole so you don't need to write one above the bracket and two moles of iron 2 and this is the, so option b is correct question number 10 x and y react together to form z in a reversible reaction the equilibrium yield of z is lower at higher temperature this statement is very important Suppose x plus y it produces z and heat. Suppose heat is evolved in this reaction. So I will say this is exothermic. Statement is saying according to statement, if you increase the temperature, the uh, product z would be lower. Definitely, reaction is exothermic. If you increase the temperature, so excess heat will react with Z and will convert into X and Y. So by increasing the temperature, your product will be less. So it means the reaction is exothermic. So it may be option A because its delta H is negative. Negative means reaction is exothermic or it may be option C. Now read the second statement. The equilibrium yield of Z is lower at a lower pressure. It means pressure has an effect. If you increase the pressure or if you decrease the pressure, then there is an effect on equilibrium. Uh, look at the option C. In option C, there are equal moles on both sides. Two moles of the reactant side and two moles on the product side. So when you have equal moles on both sides, there is no effect of pressure. So option C is wrong. And your answer is option A. Look, why option A is correct? If you lower the pressure, when you decrease the pressure, volume of gas will increase. And to increase the volume, more moles should be present. So uh, when you decrease the pressure, your volume will increase. And to increase the volume, reaction will move towards that side where the more moles are present. Here, two moles are present. So this is the uh, end of my video. I hope you will like this video and you will share this video with your friends. Goodbye.